Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. For what purpose are we placed on Earth? If man takes a correct stance on this issue, then he will be able to take a correct viewpoint in relation to particular questions that arise in daily life, in our relationships, profession, marriage, and the bearing and upbringing of children. If he does not relate correctly to this basic question, then he will also fail in life's particular purposes. The following video was written by Archmandrite George, a former abbot of a monastery on Mount Athos. It states the original purpose of Christian life, a concept called theosis. And while this concept has remained unfamiliar to the Western mind, it is not new to Christianity at all. Where are the Armenian quarter? Family, let's go in. Our life's purpose is declared in the first chapter of the Holy Scripture. And the holy author tells us that God created man in his image and likeness. From this, we can discover the great love the triune God has for man. He did not wish him to simply be a being with certain gifts, certain qualities, a certain superiority over the rest of creation. He wishes him to be a God by grace. Externally, man seems to exist in a purely biological way, like the other living beings, the animals. Of course, he is an animal, but an animal which is in the process of theosis, through its inclination towards God. He is the only being that is distinguished from all else in creation, because he is the only one which can become a god. The phrase in his image describes the gifts which God gave only to man in order to complete him as an icon of God. This is not given to any of his other creatures. A few of these gifts are a noose, conscience, and an individual sovereignty. That is to say, everything that makes man a person. These are the characteristics by which we are formed in his image. And having been endowed in his image, man is called upon to be completed in his likeness. This is theosis. The creator, God, by nature, calls man to become a god by grace. The gifts that form us in his image were given to man by God in order that he may reach very high, so that through these gifts he may attain a likeness to his God and creator, so that he may not only have an external moral relationship, but a personal union with his creator. Perhaps it's very daring for us to even say or think that our life's purpose is to become gods by grace. However, neither the Holy Bible nor the Church Fathers have hidden this from us. Unfortunately, ignorance not only exists in people outside of the Church, but also in many within the Church, because they assume that the purpose of our life is, at best, simply moral improvement. 
When we are told by the Gospels, by the tradition of the Church, and by the Holy Fathers that the purpose of our life is not just that man should become better, more moral, more just, more self-controlled, more mindful, all of these must happen, but none of them are the great purpose. What is this purpose? Theosis, for man to be united with God. Not in an external or sentimental manner, but ontologically, in a real, solid way. Man is placed so high in orthodox teaching that if we compare that with the teachings of all other philosophies or social and psychological systems, we will very easily find out how poor these are. How little they correspond to man's great yearning for something great and true in his life. Since man was created to become a god with a little g, as long as he does not find himself on the path of theosis, he feels that something is not going right. So he is not joyful, even when he is trying to cover the emptiness with other activities. He may organize his life in such a way that he's almost never at peace, surrounded by noise, tension, continuous information, not to remember that he is on the wrong path. I sort of don't feel like playing my clarinet today. Wretched contemporary man finds no rest until he finds that something else. The highest thing. The thing which actually exists in his life, which is truly beautiful and creative. Can man unite with God? Can he commune with him? Can he become a God by grace? The church fathers say that God became man in order to make man a God. If God had not taken flesh, man would not be able to achieve theosis. In the years before Christ, many wise and virtuous people had appeared. For example, the ancient Greeks had reached quite high standards of philosophy about the good and about God. Their philosophy, in fact, contained seeds of the truth. Moreover, they were very religious people. But of course, they did not know the true God. They were idolaters, yet very pious and God-fearing people. They were not atheists as certain ill-informed contemporaries of ours represent them. In the philosophy of the ancient Greeks, we can perceive a certain yearning for the unknown God, for the experiences of God. They were faithful, but they did not have the true and complete knowledge of God as they still lacked communion with him. So for this reason, theosis was not possible. In the Old Testament, we also find many just and virtuous people, but the full union with God, theosis, only becomes possible, is only achieved with the incarnation of the divine Logos. This is the purpose of the incarnation of God. If the purpose of man's life was simply to become morally better, there would be no need for Christ to come into the world. Or for all of these events of divine providence to have happened, for the incarnation, the cross, the death and resurrection, and all that we Christians believe to have happened through Christ. 
The human race could have been taught to become morally better by the philosophers, by the righteous men, teachers, or by the prophets. We know that Adam and Eve were beguiled by the devil and did not want to collaborate with God. They desired to become gods not through humility, obedience, and love, but through their own empowerment, their own willfulness, egotistically and autonomously. That is to say, the essence of the fall is egotism. Thus, by adopting egotism and self-assertion, they separated themselves from God. And instead of attaining theosis, they attained exactly the opposite, spiritual death. As the church fathers say, God is life. So whoever separates himself from God, separates himself from life. Death and spiritual death are the outcome of the disobedience of the first created. We all know the consequences of the fall. Separation from God threw man into carnal, bestial, and demonic life. The brilliant creation of God fell seriously ill, almost to a point of death. What had been made in his image was darkened. Man no longer has the qualifications he needs to proceed to theosis as he had before he sinned. In this situation of grave illness, almost lifeless, he can no longer reorient himself towards God. Thus, there is a need for a new root of humanity, for a new man who will be healthy and able to redirect the freedom of man towards God. This new root, the new man, is the God-man, Jesus Christ, the Son and Logos of God who incarnates to become the new root, the new beginning, the new leaven of humanity. With the incarnation of the Logos, a second communion between God and humanity is realized. The first communion was in paradise, and that was broken. Man was separated from God, but God in his greatness then provided for another, a second communion, which can no longer be severed a union of God and man. And this second communion happens in the person of Christ. The God-man Christ, the Son and Logos of God, the Father, has two perfect natures, divine and human. These two perfect natures are joined without change, without confusion, without separation and without division in the one person of Christ. This definition was given under the guidance of the Holy Spirit at the Fourth Holy Ecumenical Synod at Chalcedon. On this definition is formed the whole theological armory of our Orthodox Church. To summarize, one Christ, two natures, divine and human. As the God-man, he ascended to heaven. As the God-man, he sits on the right hand of the Father. As the God-man, he will judge the world at the second coming. Consequently, human nature is now enthroned with the Holy Trinity. and no longer can anything cut human nature off from God. No matter how much we as men sin, no matter how much we separate ourselves from God, if through repentance we wish to unite again with God, we can succeed and so become gods by grace.
Thus concludes the first part of the full explanation and teaching on theosis found within orthodoxy. The full teaching can be read for free via Archimandrite George's book. At a certain time, Abba Sisuus was on his deathbed. The brothers were standing around him, and they saw that his face was shining like the sun. He said to them, Behold, Abba Anthony has come. And after a short while, he also said, Behold, the company of the prophets has come. And his face again shone when he said, Behold, the company of the apostles has come. And again his face shone with twofold brightness, and suddenly it appeared as if he was talking to someone, but the brothers could not see to who. Father, show us with whom you are talking. Behold, the angels came to take me away, and, and I entreated them to leave me here so that I might toil a little longer and repent. You have no need to repent, Father. Brothers, I have not even begun to repent. And through these words, the brothers knew that the old man was perfect. And again, they saw his face beam brightly like the sun. And all who gathered there were fearful when he said, Look, look, behold, our Lord has come. And he said, Bring you to me the chosen vessel which is in the desert. And straightway Abba Sisuus delivered up his spirit and became like lightning, and a sweet odor filled the entire place.